Let's explore how to write chiptune music. Now, chiptune music, as we've discussed previously, is any time that you are taking organic sounds from an old video game console and using it in your music. There's different types of chiptune music, but the type I want to focus on today is 8-bit music. For the 8-bit sound, it's important to try your best to restrict yourself to the limitations of the console of that generation. So 8-bit comes from the NES generation, when you were only able to use just a few square waves and a couple percussion type sounds. So this piece is a bit of an 8-bit hybrid. It's not 100% limited to the same restrictions, but I'm more or less using those rules to help guide my orchestration so that I'm not sounding completely inauthentic, but I'm kind of mixing it with some other sounds too, which I'll show you. Now this piece of music I wrote for an RPG video game demo, and so it had pixel art that required just some really playful but slightly dark and mysterious music. So it's not super happy necessarily, so I decided to use some grittier 8-bit sounds to really give it that edge. So you'll notice right off the bat, I decided to pull up a square wave, and you can easily find those in Native Instruments Massive, as we've talked about before. If you just go to the first oscillator, you can go to the drop-down menu, and you can find different types of square waves. In this particular case, I decided to use a smooth square, and I went straight to my MIDI controller, and started recording in a minor key. So let's check out this part that I played live. Okay, so that's kind of the basis there. And anytime that I record with a MIDI controller, which is 99% of the time, it's important to then go back and quantize. Now this is a very clean 16th note organization with my grid. So after I record, I go over here, select everything, and hit my little Q here, and it instantly quantizes everything to the grid, which makes it look very nice. And you'll notice how I didn't copy and paste any of this. So the velocities indicated by the different colors here, you'll notice how the greens and the, like the lighter colors are the weaker velocities, but the heavier, the reds and the oranges, those are your high velocities. So you'll notice how just by playing it live, I instantly got uh, an incredible variation on the velocities and it already gives it nice accents. Which is very percussive in nature already. So after one take, that was already done. So that's one of the ways I'm able to write music so fast is I record it with a MIDI controller and then I quantize it it's good to go. And then I went over here and I added my synth bass just to double the lower parts. And I also played this live. And then I decided to add a little bit of percussion and the synth bass, I used massive as well. It's the exact same square wave. It's just an octave lower. And then for my 8-bit shuffle sound, which is kind of a traditional NES percussion, that is actually from Chip Sounds, which is by Plogue. And they have a really great database of original chip sounds taken directly from the sound chips from some of the older consoles. And this specific patch under the drums header is big in drums, which stands for, I imagine, Nintendo drums. And then I just went to town and played the whole thing in. I put it across the entire piece because as a loop, as a battle track, you want this just to be really energetic. And that's one of the best ways to have some connective tissue between your multiple sections. Then I added a kick drum, which I actually got from Contact. Now for the kick drum, I actually wanted a beefier kick. So this is where I broke the rules a little bit. Instead of using an 8-bit traditional kick drum, which would just kind of be like a doo, 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 a really high-pitched tom, 
I instead decided to grab some dubstep sounds from 8DO in my contact, and I found a really beefy bass drum, which sounds like this without any of the plugins. Really beefy. And then I took that and I bit crushed it to fit better into this style, but without losing all of its beefiness. So I crushed it down to an 8 bit and mixed it halfway so it still keeps some of its original timbre. And then I used an EQ to take out some of the mids so it's not too much in the way of the other instruments. And then I wanted to kind of fill that in a little bit to give it some more energy. So then I went back to chip sounds and I found the 8-bit toms in the drum section and just use that to kind of get it back into that, that fun style. I actually use these quite a bit even in non chip tune style music, I just think they're super fun to add in there. And then I also found with chip sounds in their AR section, which is the ARPS, I found a power up sound, kind of like a traditional Mario gets a mushroom kind of sound, which sounds like this. And I pitched it up and put some delay on it to make it kind of an effect that acts as a transition into the next section. And I actually pitched it to where it perfectly lands on the exact same note as the melody. Listen again. So it transitions even better that way. And then all I did is I kept the beat going. I continued changing chords and whatnot compositionally. But then I decided to also add a melody. So I took a chip sounds lead, in this case mono plumber, which is a clear reference to Mario. And I like how these are taken from the original chips, so you can't beat that if you're trying to go for that style of sound. And then since I found that that sound was a little weak in the mix, it's really fighting hard to be the melody amidst all of that loud and bright music. So I just doubled it, which is one of the orchestrational things we've talked about. And I just doubled it verbatim. Notice it's an octave apart in a much brighter melodic chip sound. <laughs> And then for the final touch, I wanted to add more energy to that section, make it special. So I took another chip sounds and I EQ'd the highs like crazy so that it wouldn't bleed too much and you can hear it. If I take the EQ off, you can hear it, what it did. So if we put everything together, the final track sounds like this. So that's it for chiptune music, try it out! <laughs>